Sunshine Cathedral is a different kind of church where the past is past and the future has infinite possibilities. This is the day our God has made. Welcome to Light for the Path, which is our weekly online Bible study here at Sunshine Cathedral. I'm Darrell Watkins, the senior minister here at Sunshine Cathedral, and with me is Reverend Ann Atwell, who is the Minister of Connections, also here at Sunshine Cathedral. Uh, we hope you'll join us whenever you're in the area. Our worship is at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. here at 1480 Southwest 9th Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of stuff online. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. You can find us all kinds of ways. Uh, today, uh, we're just looking at two passages, uh, one from the Psalter and one from the Gospel. So let's just, uh, let's just get going. I'll do the first one, which is Psalm 25, uh, the first nine verses. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions, According to your steadfast love, remember me for the goodness of your own sake, God. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, God instructs us in the way. God leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble the proper way. This is a uh, song of lament. Um, I, I love that the psalms are so comprehensive, that there are songs of exaltation, there are psalms of lament. There are even psalms uh, of ascent. When you're walking up the hill to, to Jerusalem, when you're walking up to the temple, there's even a song for, for taking your trip. Uh, there, are, there are prayers for healing, there are prayers for battle, there are, there are prayers for when you just feel like you've really stepped in it and, and messed it up beyond repair, and yet there's really nothing uh, that's beyond God's healing touch. And so this is uh, this wonderful uh, honesty of just regret and fear. Uh, to you, Lord, I lift up my soul. Why am I lifting it up? Because it's dragging the ground. Because um, uh, I am defeated. I feel defeated. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like everything's against me. The sky is falling. And so I'm making an intentional effort in prayer to lift up my soul. Oh, my God, in you I trust. There's nothing very trustworthy about my circumstances right now. Um, maybe my health isn't cooperating the way uh, I would like for it to. Maybe the pennies aren't stretching as far as I need for them to. Maybe uh, some friends aren't being good friends right now. Or maybe some enemies seem to be uh, coming at me. Maybe there's uh, something that's terribly unjust uh, in my world. And yet... I'm focusing on all that, and I get a little overwhelmed, I get a little crazy, I get a little scared. So right now in this moment of prayer, I'm going to lift up my soul, and I'm going to affirm trust in God, that God is greater. We used to say that, and it sounded almost ridiculous to say, but we said it over and over and over in the 80s and 90s. We would say, God is greater than AIDS. Mm -hmm. God is greater than AIDS. We would say it at funerals. We would say it you know, at the bedside of people in comas, and we would say, God is greater than AIDS. It just had to be. Yeah. It just had, there had to be something, even if it wasn't showing up now, even if we didn't know when things were going to get better, it just had to be that this disaster wasn't going to get the last word. It was going to take some casualties. It was going to do a lot of damage, but it couldn't have the last word. And so that's what we see here in the song of, Psalm of Lament. I lift up my soul. I trust in you. And then sometimes we do this. We think maybe it's, Maybe I deserve some of this. Maybe, you know, what did I do to deserve this? Maybe I did something to bring on some of this tragedy. But we know that's not right. We know the rain falls on the just mm -hmm. and the unjust. We know we've done great things. Uh, that was my experience in college. Uh, I worked 
hard for my statistics class. And I even made a grade in the 80s, but which was like a B right. in most right. classes, not in this professor's class. Uh, a B started at 85, and I made it in 84. I worked oh. so hard for that 84, and it would have been a B in anyone else's class, and his it was a C+. Uh, I worked hard, and it didn't much matter for my GPA. There were other classes... For my Spanish labs, I don't remember going to Spanish lab. I don't think I ever went to Spanish lab, and I got an A. Uh -huh. uh, I can barely read a, a menu in a Mexican restaurant. So we know we have given maximum effort, and who cares, and other times we have phoned it in and it worked out. We know that things don't always work out the way, because you earned it, whether it was good or bad. And the psalmist kind of wrestles with that. Uh, be mindful of your mercy. Remember how good you are and remember who I am. Do not remember the, my mistakes in the past. Remember how loving you are and remember me. Remember me. Not my mistakes. Me. I am a child of God made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing, he's not or she, probably he, isn't trying to convince God to be merciful. He's probably convincing himself that God is merciful. If nothing else, God is going to love me through this. If nothing else, I'm not alone with this. If nothing else, God's heart is breaking that my heart is breaking. And uh, because God is good. And he, 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 talk, and he works his way through that. That's why the Psalms are therapeutic. Because you start with what is, and you name it, and you work through it, and you wind up in a better place. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, God instructs us, God leads us, God teaches us the proper way. And so I just think it's a good lesson in um, not blaming ourselves. And if we are tempted to blame ourselves, if we're tempted to give up, if we're tempted to, to be overwhelmed, just to bring all of that into prayer. And just say like the psalmist did, I lift up my soul. I trust you. I'm going to remind myself that even though other people seem to be out to get me or a virus is out to get me or the economy is out to get me, God's not out to get me. God's with me. God's loving me. God's leading me. And just like we said during those terrible AIDS days, this can't be to the end of the story. Right. God is greater than whatever it is I'm facing. It is not the final word. It's not the final word. Um, our second reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by the accuser. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the realm of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This passage from Mark is just loaded with imagery. We hear of a spirit descending. We imagine the heavens being torn open. A voice from heaven. Images of wilderness and images of an accuser. There are wild beasts and there are angels. Quite a lot to take in in just a few verses. Um, whenever I read this, um, I see really three distinct sections. Um, and the first part is the heavens being torn apart and a voice telling Jesus, no one else, just Jesus. Jesus is the only one who is hearing this, that he is the child of the divine. He is the beloved. And with this imagery, I focus on the times in which we know what it means to witness the heavens being torn apart. What does it mean for us to connect with God like that, who recognizes us and calls us to recognize our place in the divine community? It has such, for me, a pastoral implication. What is it that we do as part of our ministry that opens up the heavens, not only for us, but for those around us in the compassion and justice work that many of us do, that we do here at Sunshine Cathedral, a lot of other folks do. We can witness that tearing open of heavens when we feed those in need 
or when we visit those who are ill, somebody who is in the hospital, um, when we offer an affirmation to someone who just needs to know that they are um, pleasing to God, that to them um, is a breaking open, a tearing open of the heavens. Um, another part for me is when Jesus is driven into the wilderness for mm -hmm. 40 days. Now this number 40 mm -hmm. is very reminiscent of the Israelites being in the wilderness um, for 40 years, and it means just means a really, really long time. Um, the section tells us that there were wild beasts and there were angels. Um, it may seem simplistic, but I think that we can remember that when we are in those wilderness times, when we're in those times of maybe temptation and of fear, that there are angels who will help us through those difficulties. I would suspect that many of us have experienced that kind of thing. I know um, last year my father was quite ill. Um, I went to see him when he was in the hospital, and it was very difficult. We were very fearful. We knew what was coming. He had been ill for so long. And when I walked into the room, there were just nurses around him, mm. caring for him, being there for him. Um, one of them took my mother and I out into the hallway to tell what was happening. And even in those dark, fearful, wilderness times, there are angels. Sometimes we just have to look for the angels. I remember um, Mr. Rogers, believe it or not, saying, <laughs> sometimes you just have to look for the helpers. Mm. The angels, the helpers are yeah. always there. And in the final part of this passage, Jesus is going to Galilee to share the good news of God. Um, Jesus didn't go to a large city. Jesus didn't go to a place of extravagance or of major economic com commerce. Right. He went to Galilee, a smaller town outside of these major economic um, and political places in Israel, a place where the marginalized people resided. It's a place where Jesus healed and where Jesus ministered to the poor and where he confronted governmental authorities. I remember seeing a video a few years back. Um, Brendan Brandon Scott, who is the Professor Emeritus of New Testament at Phillips Theological Seminary, told the viewers that if Jesus were to return today, he wouldn't come to the United States, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't go to Europe or England, anything like that. Um, he said, and I appreciate this, if Jesus were to return, he would probably go to Guatemala mm. or a similar country in which the people are so persecuted and oppressed by the larger and more powerful governments. Even in this Today, story. I think El Salvador. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. There, there's, there's so many places that it just, it really resonates, rings true. Um, Jesus um, preaches and heals in Galilee in a small town yeah. to marginalized people. And that can be a hopeful message um, to those who continue to be oppressed today. I think that this is such an appropriate um, scripture passage for our Lenten journey, to mm -hmm. begin that Lenten journey as we focus on the message of Jesus and of resurrection power. Um, it seems fitting to focus on our sacred nature, um, the presence of angels and of divine love in those wilderness times and how important it is to take steps um, to assist and to be present to marginalized communities. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I was just thinking uh, about El Salvador when you said Guatemala, because right. of last month, uh, <clears throat> a lot of brouhaha so about much. people having to go back to El Salvador, yes, and yes. Uh, they, they sought safety elsewhere, like in the US, and they're having mm -hmm. to go back to a very unsafe yeah. situation. Um, well, I like to look for parallels uh, in these, and what some that came up for me, uh, they were pretty direct parallels. Uh, Jesus uh, has a wilderness experience, and the psalmist is worried about enemies. He's, right. he's, in, a, he, he, he's in a fearful uh, wasteland. Um, there's an accuser sort of nagging at, at Jesus, mm -hmm. and the psalmist is doing some self-accusing. Uh, you know, I, I, I messed up, I was... I, don't look at my transgressions from my youth. I, you know, I've made some mistakes. Uh, don't look at... So he's sort of beating himself up. His, his own ego is accusing him. His own little mm -hmm. sense of little self, separated self. Um, Jesus hears this affirmation. This is, you know, this is my chosen one. This is my child. I'm, I'm pleased with you. 
And the psalmist says, remember, remember me. Don't, don't remember all my mistakes. Remember who I really am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm God's child. God's beloved. God's, God is well pleased. Um, the, uh, uh, Jesus is attended. There's beasts. There's, there's the enemies. There, there's the troubles. But there's also angels. Mm -hmm. And angels are, are messengers uh, from God. And the psalmist ends with uh, receiving messages from God. Mm -hmm. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore God instructs us. Mm -hmm. God teaches the humble mm -hmm. the proper way. Um, and then uh, the psalmist, by working out, by praying about it, by taking his fears to God, affirming, I, I lift up my soul, I do trust in God, uh, and talking his way through his fear, he gets to this good place. You know, God's, God's going to get me through this. God's mm -hmm. going to tell me what I need to do. God's going to teach me what I need to know. I'll be okay. So he, he has a change of attitude. He mm -hmm. works through it. And the last line in the gospel is repent. Have a change mm -hmm. of attitude, a change of mind, a change of focus. And believe the good news. Mm -hmm. And that's what the psalmist has done. He's changed his attitude to believe good is possible. Mm -hmm. And so they were pretty, uh, pretty parallel in ways that aren't always that easy. But <laughs> these were pretty directly parallel. Right, I absolutely agree. You know, as you were talking about that, I was thinking of the empowering message. Um, the psalmist went to God, but then was empowered by sharing what was happening. And then, okay, I can continue on. This isn't the mm -hmm. final thing. I'm empowered now to continue. And in the um, Gospel from Mark, it's um, Jesus was empowering people by going out and preaching the Word. And Jesus himself was empowered mm -hmm. by God as well through the baptism and the heavens being torn open. Okay, this is up to you. And so Jesus took that and went and empowered others mm -hmm. as well to go out there and to make those changes. Yeah. So this this is our, our Lenten journey. Let's, let's do this. And the two passages in tandem really mm -hmm. make a pretty good statement about prayer. Yes. Prayer is talking to God, like the psalmist is doing. Uh, prayer is self-talk, mm -hmm. like the psalmist is doing, so that you talk yourself into trusting God, remembering what God is, remembering the good. And prayer is also listening for God. And in the gospel, Jesus hears God affirm mm -hmm. him. You're, you know, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's what empowers him then to, to face the wilderness and, mm -hmm. and come out of it and then go empower others. So the prayer is talking to ourselves, it's talking to God, and it's listening for God. Mm -hmm. And we get that full picture between the two the two passages. Right, and a great spiritual practice for the Lenten journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To take that into prayer when, when things seem a little um, difficult, when you have mm -hmm. those um, those just difficult times, um, those laments. Yeah. Pray about it and, and come out empowered. That's going to be my Lenten commitment, I think, is that whenever I see beast, I'm going to immediately look for the angels. All right, there you when, go. Where there's beast, there there's got to be there angels. All right, absolutely. And yep. uh, so I'm going to look for the angels. Yep. All right, good stuff. Um, Thanks for joining us again for Light for the Path. We'll see you again next week. And remember, if you're ever in Fort Lauderdale, we'd love for you to worship with us uh, on 9th Avenue here in Fort Lauderdale. And if you can't be with us in person, you can always join us online at your convenience.